I nabbed it before it could run out. Also, if you want to get in touch with her, all her stuff over here, her email. And of course, let's not forget the Bacon Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> here we go. The Bacon the Brothers. The Bacon Brothers. Oh, the Bacon This is Desiree Velez. You can call me Desi. I'm here with Click On This with the beautiful Jen Grinnell. And we are at the Birchmere in Virginia. And the Birchmere is no joke. It's a small little place, uh, very intimate, but it has had some amazing people here like yourself. And we were chatting a little bit before we got back here. We were doing some bonding. Can I say I love you? <laughs> you are so down to earth, girl. Thanks. She is, and her voice, <laughs> Girl, you got some pipes. Thank you, you, your voice is so sultry. Uh, it, it's just amazing. But um, first, I just want to, I want to talk about <laughs> you. So tell me, we were just discussing how many days or how many years straight you went on tour. Yeah, I toured straight for ten years. Ten years. Ten years of nonstop hotel after hotel, city after city. I mean, what what did you do to keep sane? Yes, it's really lonely. I think the first three years I was very much by myself, and then the few years after that I was trying to tour more and more with a band, and now I rarely tour by myself just because uh, it's lonely, and I would much rather have other people with me. Well, you should because you have a very magnetic personality. <laughs> and, I mean, your smile is so warm. You're so vivacious. <laughs> but I was listening to uh, one of your newest renditions, Maybe I'm Amazed, you know, by Paul McCartney. You went and did your own version, mm -hmm. and you teamed up with another gentleman. I did, Steve Majora, who's uh, an artist out of Los Angeles, um, who I actually knew when I was growing up and knew um, he was a musician now as uh, for his occupation. And um, I knew I wanted to do kind of a gospel-y version and um, I was living in Nicaragua at the time, and so I sent him some tracks, and I said, he's an amazing pianist, and I said, can you please put some piano over this? But then I remembered his voice, and I said, actually, can we just, just make this a duet, and can you give me a, some vocal tracks too? And he sent it back, and I was like, brilliant. Let me tell you what, can I echo that? Brilliant. <laughs> I think Baltimore has a, such an underrated local music scene, and I happen to be close with a lot of Baltimore musicians and I've toured around this whole country and I think that it's really it's a special scene it's you know I'm waiting for it to be like the Memphis or the New Orleans or Austin where they're where people are just so proud of their local music because that definitely exists in Baltimore and most of the people that were headlining were local local musicians and I was felt honored to be brought in but I just remember thinking oh my god the mayor needs to be here I mean people <laughs> need to be here and and this thing should be sold out you know the minute it goes on sale because um, it's just such a great scene my myself and my co-host Johnny Alonzo who was just in there uh, interviewing the Bacon Brothers we all base ourselves from here we have a tremendous amount of talent not just in the music scene, but in the acting scene. And um, he's probably going to want to marry you after this, aren't you, Johnny? <laughs> um, the latest thing that I did was a live album two years ago. But what I have been doing since and what has completely changed my life is a website called Patreon. Patreon.com. Thank you, because this is where <laughs> I check this woman out, and she gets a lot of her support. And I want you to talk about this, yeah. because social media... Wow, social media is amazing for artists. It can propel them to the next level. It can also knock you down. You know, uh, too many people I think use it as a diary and blurt something out there without thinking, <laughs> and there you go. But it is an amazing tool for any aspiring actor, singer, songwriter. Um, and this particular site, people sponsor you. Yeah, it's basically patronage of old, um, but updated and, and organized into a digital platform, a website. So 
it really, as somebody who has toured very grassroots for the last 10 years um, and just slowly built a really loyal, amazing, wonderful fan base, um, people sponsor me and can sponsor other artists of um, all mediums, you know. Uh, for me, they sponsor me per song, so they say it doesn't matter what you write. Whatever you publish, um, which to me, I, that means I probably publish one song a month, maybe two songs a month, they pledge a certain amount. Some people only, pledge... You only publish one song a month. Yes. <laughs> she makes me feel so lazy. Go ahead. <laughs> um, so sometimes it's a dollar, sometimes, you know, people do five dollars, um, some people are crazy generous and do more than that, and I try to give them incentives to be more generous, like free tickets to this, you know, to the show, or um, uh, postcards from wherever I am, you know. But like they that. also sponsor your videos, because this one, this amazing video that you did, that was shot in Nic Nicaragua and Los Angeles, mm -hmm. with, um, let me, Steve, let me, how do you say his last name again? Majora. Steve Majora, let me tell you what, he's hot. Is he single? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, actually. I mean, he's got a great voice, everybody. And if you check <laughs> this site out and you s see them sing this duet, it's fabulous. And you know what? It, it brought tears to me. <laughs> I get so emotional. It yeah. brought tears to me because, <laughs> you know, I had a flashback of when uh, Na uh, Natalie Cole was on stage and she sang a duet with her dad. Oh, and he yeah. wasn't really there. He was right. on screen, the unforgettable but they, duet. it was the most unforgettable duet to me in history. <laughs> and at the end, she blew a kiss and said, I love you, Daddy. Yeah. And it just brought the house down to tears. But, but you I can't believe you're fabulous. comparing those two. <laughs> no, you know what? Don't sell yourself short. Well, I'm not you. going to let it's you. It's amazing. It's brilliant. Yeah, and I, how did you get come about um, touring with the Bacon Brothers? or How, how, how did that happen? Yes. Um, how did that happen? I, I think I was just hanging out in Mexico writing my songs, um, and I've performed many times at the Birchmere. I love this venue. I love everyone who works here. Um, they've been so supportive of me, and I was just browsing the calendar, and I saw that there were three shows in a row, and I thought, that's worth a flight from Mexico, and I had, fr had friends who'd opened for them and said they were great, so I just um, asked the venue, and the venue said, we'll ask them, and then everyone said, yes, here I am. So. You know why? Because they saw how terrific you were, and they would have been crazy not to have her. I'm, I'm really gonna like suck up to you all. I'm amazed at the way you love me all the time. Keep going. Yeah. I'm amazed at the way you pull me out of time. Woo! me on a line. Now you, you're Maybe writing a musical. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Ooh, compound question. Um, mm. I have not always sung like that because I did musical theater, so I used to sing in a very trained sort of a way um, until I played Janis Joplin for three years. Uh, <laughs> and that was not the typical trained. You know, no. I was trying to imitate a, a rock star. So um, I think that kind of informed how I was writing my own music. But then I think my own style has just evolved over the years and you know you spend so much time recording yourself and listening back and and fine-tuning how you want to um, you know express yourself and so I guess that's what's brought me to where I am now uh, and in terms of the musical I'm writing it's um, it's set in the Civil War era um, and I think acoustic guitar will probably be the main instrument and I'm but from the beginning I've been pretty uh, I have said to the production company that I'm really interested in having actors and actresses that don't sing with the typical musical theater vibrato and, um, you know. An amen, girl. <laughs> amen. <laughs> I mean, so. but, but this, this is what I wanted because, like I said, I didn't want to just, like, pinpoint every single recording that you've done recently because anyone can Google you and get your resume. But I wanted you. And, and I wanted the complexities of you and I mean what a range I mean you've gone from musicals to this sultry kind of thing to now you're writing a musical and probably based on the negative experiences you had about musicals so now you're writing <laughs> one where like you said you don't want Stepford Wives kind of performers you want real people um, and you want that emotion and and but what made you set it in the Civil War period uh, well, actually, the production company is called B-Side Productions, and the, um, 
the owner and creative director. His name is Jasper Grant. And um, he came to me specifically because he's a fan of my music and the music that I've written. And he said, I want something that is you. <laughs>